Hi, in this video, we are going to answer a question asked by Mike. So, Mike has tried to uh, apply the full calendar with some data retrieved from an API. So, he has the load full calendar function. Inside it, he has get the element and then use the new calendar keyword. And then he has the events as a function with the start and callback. And then he has to use some Ajax. To get some to send a post request to a local uh, API to get some JSON, and he has passed the JSON and put it into an array. So he has put it element by element with the title and start property, and then he has called the callback, and then the render the Canada. So everything looks fine. So let's try to uh, check what what's wrong with it. So here we will go to the full calendar official website and check the documents. So here, when we scroll down, we see the events. We have event model, event sources, event display, event kickling. And here, what we need to do is the event source. So for the event sources, there are three ways. The events can be array, JSON feed, or function. So the normal way is the array. So when we use the new Canada keyword, we can, uh, the second argument can be have an events property. So it can be an array with all the objects with the title and start property. So this is the easiest way. But if the data is from an API, so we will use the function. And if we use J events as a function, the function should have three arguments the fetch info, the successful callback, and the failure callback. So these are usually called resolve and reject. And for the fetch info, it is an object with the property of start and and something else. So this is the demonstration example. So here we will uh, use the new Canada keyword with the event object. And for the function, there are three arguments: info, the success callback, and the failure callback. So there is some uh, fetch. And for check with the error, if it is error, call the reject. If it is no error, call the, call the resolve. So that is, and what we pass into it is an array. So this is how to use the event as a function. So the successful callback should be the second argument. And if we look at Mike's uh, try, it is quite close, quite close. So he has the start end. So this is by mistake. So it should be uh, the first object. And the second one should be the successful callback. And this should be a third argument, the failure callback. Uh, let's try to demonstrate it. Let's try to go through this once. So first of all, we will create a uh, the project file inside the directory. So we have the HTML. Use the exclamation mark. And here we will import the libraries. So let's get the URL from a current file. So we have the style sheet and the JS script of the full Canada 5.1.0. And we will have a uh, element, a div with the ID uh, calendar. And then we will have the JavaScript. So this is a simple demo, so I'm putting it in the same place. And I will switch on with the live server, so we can see it in real time. Let's uh, also open the console. So here, what we have is, uh, let's copy these two lines. So here, what we will have is, we have a low full calendar. To put it as a uh, if alternate f, this is put it as a module. So Not affect the variable name of the other. <laughs> and we need a render dot render. That's fine. Now we have the Canada, this uh, simple script, we have the get element, this if edit, 
call it independent element, call the Canada element, and an object. So we have nothing now here. Then we will call the Canada render. Have the Canada, and then you go take type. And now let's go to uh, the defense and function. Use the defense as a as the second argument, the uh, object okay. So we have the events as a function. The function has the info, the success callback, and the failure callback. And from here, we will call the successful callback after some uh, some uh, fetching activity. So we will call the callback. And now we don't have anything inside our array so we need to put something inside so let's call it the events uh, array and because uh, i don't have an api now so let's just uh, define this events array so uh, let's copy it from here let's copy it from here so we have some uh, an array with some objects. And these objects, let's change the day to today. So here you can see that we have the event coming out. So this is how to use the events as a function. We will for the successful callback, or we can call it resolve, and the successful callback should be the second argument of this function. For the first, uh, for the start and end, it should be property of this object, fetch info object. So, uh, this is the. I hope this helps you, Mike. And um, there is one more way. So you see. He has get the response and then he has passed the response and use the each and push them one by one. So the response uh, is a string. So he is using Python, JSON pass and then he is uh, doing this the item title, item start, item end. And this property name for the title is title. For the start, it is start dt. End is end dt. And all day is all day. So if the API is like this, he can. Simply change the dt, start dt to start, change the end dt to end, and what he can use is this one events as a JSON feed. Events as a JSON feed, he can use event and then give a URL. So this URL, uh, this may visit this one. So, so uh, he can uh, simply use the URL. And for the color and test color, here he has the color and the test color. You can still put it here as an option. But for the for the data, for the title, start end, he can fix his API because this is a local API from what I see. So he can change the property and then he can just uh, return the right, right uh, object. So he can just put URL here and then this is the uh, uh, Ajax target. So this is a simpler way for, to use events as a JSON feed. So this is even uh, more simpler. So uh, I hope this helps you, Mike. And I'm a bit sorry that I'm a bit late in responding. If there's uh, anything else, then please ask me in the comment section. Thank you. Bye bye.